In today's news, Thursday, February 11th, to be the first vaccination day in the territory, Eslin Henley Roche Learning Center receives a brand new bus from the Lions Club of Tortola and the H. Lavity Stout Community College Virgin Islands Studies Institute collaborates with local author to launch illustrated coloring book. We also see a Bacchus Bay man being charged for carrying a loaded unlicensed firearm and two BVI hotels receive high honors on the U.S. News and World Report. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. Hey, Johnson. What's up? Well, you look like you're about to pass out. I think I am. But anyhow. Ciao. <laughs> what are you doing? Remember last year when I spoke to you over the phone? When I said, oh, well. Anyhow, ever since that moment, I was wanting to take this step further with you. <laughs> oh, gee, that's it. I want to know if you, Via, would officially have me as your sales rep with a friend. What? To get live with our February promotions. Huh? Get live, get loved, and get gifted. Bring a friend to CCT to sign up for a freedom plan. Take a picture with them in the store and post to social media with the hashtag GetLiveCCT. Then put your receipt with your number in the golden basket and wait on a call from Jante. First place gets $500 each. Second place matching Samsung Galaxy A30s. And third place $150 shopping vouchers each to one mark. So what you really say? Really? And I could bring a friend too? What a merrier. Welcome everybody. It's Tuesday, February 9th, 2020. A terrific Tuesday to each and every one of you. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson. So, so happy to be joining you once yes. again for another edition of 284 News, where, of course, we cover your local, regional, as well as your international content. Now, we're kicking things off on a very positive note. Indeed. BVI Hotels, of course, Little Dicks and Scrub Island, they both have ranked really high on the U.S. news and reports list. Gron, this is an incredibly big deal, especially since we are in the midst of a pandemic and travel has been brought to a halt. The BVI is still ranked as one of the best places, not only one of the most beautiful, but also now one of the most safest places to travel in the midst of this pandemic. It is absolutely remarkable. Uh, and despite our sun, sand and sea, it is yes. good to see that we're uh, doing very well as it comes to services. Well, absolutely. very important. Continuing yes. on on our summary, Thursday, February 11th, uh, viewers, is the big day, says Health Minister, the Honorable Carvin Malone. Now details on how to register and set your appointment to be vaccinated at one of the nine vaccination centers on Anagata, Virgin Gorda, Tortola, and Joss Van Dyke will be followed uh, shortly, yes. uh, the minister outlined. Also, the BVI's financial uh, secrecy score worsens in the last two years. Additionally, 57 uh, $1,000 has been raised during the Visar's uh, Winter Wonderland Christmas event, which took place uh, last year. So that's great, great news. Absolutely. Viewers, we'll jump right into it. Yes, beginning on the local scene here in the British Virgin Islands, the Lion Club of Tortola, in partnership with the West Indian Association of Bermuda, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Agriculture, and Fisheries, and of course, the Ministry of Health and Social Development here in the British Virgin Islands. Today, February 9th, at an official handover ceremony, donated a bus, a school bus, to the Eslin Henry Roche Learning Center. Now, the ceremony took place in the parking lot of the Althair Scatlet Primary School, which is the temporary home of the Eslin Henry Roche Learning Center. Following the devastation of Hurricanes Irma and Maria in September of 2017, the Learning Center uh, lost its school home, which is yet to be reconstructed. Now, following a long period of displacement, the school was relocated to a room at the Althair Scatliff Primary School, where they remain to this day. Now, the Lions Club of Tortola reached out to the school in September of 2019 just to see how they were doing and how they could better assist with the needs, which included computers, a TV, a school bus for transporting the students to their homes and to field trips. In March of 2020, the club, along with corporate sponsors, Infinite Solutions and uh, Morons, donated four loads, uh, laptops, sorry, and 65-inch uh, uh, TV, smart TV, to the Learning Center. The club also committed to further assisting with getting a school bus. In August of 2019, the club was approached by the West Indian Association of Bermuda, who had raised 
$20,000 to assist the Virgin Islands following the devastation of Hurricanes Anne Maria. They agreed to partner with the Lions Club of Tortola to use the funds for a community project. Now the club agreed to apply the funds towards the purchase of the school bus for the learning center. The funds were supplemented, of course, by donations of $9,000 and an additional $5,000 from the Ministries of Education and Health, respectively. Present at the handover ceremony uh, this morning were principals as well as the Honorable Minister for Education and the 5th District Representative, the Honorable Kai Reimer, along with students and members of the Lions Club, uh, the media, and other uh, government officials. Uh, Jovan, this was quite an auspicious occasion yes. uh, to really see the principal uh, just beam with joy mm -hmm. uh, to receive a mm -hmm. very, very needed uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, transportation for the school. Uh, she mentioned that, you know, it's not safe for her to be transporting uh, the students in her personal vehicle. So we are so happy and proud that the Lions uh, Club has been able to do this. Another example of uh, corporate and this time uh, uh, volunteer uh, support. Absolutely. And we do applaud the efforts of uh, the Lions Club. They yes. have been lending their efforts to the community for years and years. Uh, but also, Ron, when we think about uh, this school in particular, uh, we have to continue to commit not only to personalizing education to meet the mm. needs of these students, but we want to ensure that we are also committed to getting them back to a, a, a conducive facility. Agreed. So we are hoping, just like corporate uh, BVI continues to come forward, that they can come forward collectively and assist with getting our students back to school. And, and that, Jovan, was actually one of the questions asked today. Mm -hmm. When can we expect students to exactly. be uh, in their own home? Mm -hmm. uh, viewers, if you missed the live, which we were uh, proud to be a part of today, uh, visit our Facebook page and you can watch the entire handover ceremony. Our viewers, as we move on, Rosewood Little Digs Bay and Scrub Island Resort, Spa and Marina have been awarded top honors in a new survey of Caribbean hotels by the U.S. News and World Report. Both hotels earned a gold badge from the magazine, meaning that they are in the top 10% of properties in the Caribbean. Now Little Digs Bay placed 14th in the Caribbean and Scrub Island placed 36th. Now, Managing Director Andrea Perez of Little Dicks Bay said, and I quote, to be recognized as the number one hotel and resort not only in Virgin Garda, but in the entire British Virgin Islands following our four-year closure and renovation is a testament to the hard work and dedication of every member of our team. We are so honored to receive this extraordinary um, designation and we are also pleased to be able to offer extraordinary experiences and dedicated service to each of our guests and visitors end of quote now like this stuttered uh, Canil bay resort in saint john rosewood little digs bay founded by lawrence rockefeller um, and that was of course ravished by hurricane Hurricanes Irma and Maria, sorry, the U.S. news ranking is the first to include the hotel since it reopened following the storm, according to the resort. Now, Scrub Island General Manager Mr. Michael Schwagen said his staff was, and I quote, humbled to be included among such a fantastic company. He said, and I quote, the gold distinction further solidifies, sorry, our prominence as a luxury resort offering exemplary service and stellar amenities to visitors from around the world. Viewers, in addition to that, of course, our very own Sugar Mill Hotel on Tertola placed 148 in the ranking and third in the British Virgin Islands. In the U.S. Virgin Islands, the Buccaneer earned a silver badge, placing 258 in ranking. Then we also saw that silver badges were awarded uh, to the top 30% of hotels in the region. Now, the top hotel in the region is, of course, uh, Cheval Blanc, and that is in St. Bart's. But for those who may not know, uh, the rankings take into account the aggregate opinion of public, uh, published sorry, travel experts through industry awards and the overall customer satisfaction expressed in online guest reviews, according to the magazine. Now, the highest ranking hotels are typically those that both experts and users recognize for their quality in addition to the Caribbean properties, the magazine also ranked top hotels in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Europe, as well as the best uh, pet-friendly boutique uh, pools, golf, and spa 
brand and also brand hotels in the United States of America. Ron, what an accomplishment Indeed. for the BVI. We are known for a lot of great things in the Virgin Islands, but uniquely um, the hospitality and the beauty and the tourism product that is um, the British Virgin Islands. I'm really happy to see that despite all the setbacks that came as a result of COVID-19, the BVI has been able to bounce back. Yes. It's clearly showing that we have a very robust um, product that will continue to survive generations to come. Well, Jovan, I trust that this uh, uh, accomplishment is really a testament, and I hope it serves as an encouragement to yes. the many persons who labor in the hospitality industry. Hospitality industry, your work uh, has not gone unnoticed, Absolutely. and we continue to uh, employ you to do the best that you can to continue to protect our very, very needed hospitality product. All right. Well, still ahead, viewers, HLSCC's Virgin Island Studies Institute collaborated with a local author to launch, of course, her illustrated book. We spoke to her. We're getting into the details. And the North Sung Administration Building finally handed over. All this happened today. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. The wind. Oh! What is the I'm freaking out. It is time. Eight, music. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Davis has won Viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. You're watching 284 News out of Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. Continuing on, the director of the H. Lavi Stout Community College's Virgin Islands Studies Institute, Mrs. Bernadine Louis, is collaborating with the principal, author, and past HLSCC student, Gabrielle Skelton Bardot, to co author Book Two Eastern. Tortola of the Illustrated History of the Virgin Islands Coloring Book Series. Now, the book's cover and some of the content that will be included was recently shared at a book reveal event. The series, which will comprise of six volumes with illustrations, cover each of the main islands on the outlying keys. Uh, book two, of course, of the series will be launched later in this year. Now, Mrs. Louis said, and I quote, the project showcases the value of the Institute's work in the community, as the Institute is a major source of information in the Virgin Islands history and culture and can also provide research assistance and guidance for projects of this nature. Minister for Education, Culture, Agriculture, Fisheries, and, uh, of course, uh, the very uh, uh, popularly known sports ministry, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley, for which the college falls under, and of course, president of the HLV Stout Community College, local author and poet laureate, Dr. Richard Georges, both attended uh, the event and gave very encouraging remarks. Now, the six-volumed project consists of a team of individuals throughout the community. In the editorial capacity, the team includes a local historian, education stalwart and acclaimed author Dr. Quincy Letson and H. Lavity South Community College lecturer Mrs. Medita Wheatley, vice chair of the HLSCC's board of governors and executive director of Unite BVI Dr. L. Sowood Smith is also a mentor to the book series project. In addition to the book series project, Territorial Doll Initiative was introduced with a team of young entrepreneurs, including the local designer, the one and only Kristen Fraser, local illustrators, Dwayne Mactavius and Jaya Maduru, uh, Zoe Walcott, local artists Joseph Hodge and April Glasgow are also part of this very amazing project. Now, book one, authored by Gabriel Skelton Bardot and illustrated by David Trasher, covers Central Tortola and was published in July of 2020. In highlighting the territorial symbols, and major historical landmarks in Rotown and the surrounding areas with eye-catching illustrations that can be colored. Now, uh, territorial symbols uh, we cannot forget, such as the bird, the tree, and the dish, as well as landmarks such as Old Administration Building, Sir Oliver George's Plaza, Cottage Hospital, Peebles Hospital, now the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital, Old Majesty's Prison, and the Sunday Morning Well, as well as so much more uh, were included. The series will continue to highlight the historical 
and cultural information of the British Virgin Islands uh, elementary level curriculum. Such a needed tool, and we congratulate all persons who are part of this project. Absolutely, and I'm sure, I don't know if you had a chance to see, Ron, yes, a full collection of territorial dolls mm -hmm. now added to uh, BVI history. Yeah. I think definitely once the administration uh, building is completed, that should be up in a corner. It's going to look really good. Definitely yeah. a project well done. Viewers, as we move on, the redevelopment of the North Sound Administration building is now complete and was actually handed over just this morning. Now, the building, which sustained extensive damage in the hurricanes of 2017, is the very first building project executed under the Territories Development Bank Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Loan and, of course, was handed over from the Recovery and Development Agency, RDA, to the Deputy Governor at a handover and rededication ceremony held earlier today. If you missed it, listen in. When we took office, we recognized that this project had to be one of the projects that made the priority list. And I need to also give you a little history of how we are where we are. First of all, I want to state that when we took office, there was concerns about the CDB loan at the time, the $65 million loan, only uh, accruing interest and also certain uh, consultancy fees in terms of technical areas. And we were able to sit with the Ministry of Finance. And I want to single out today and thank the Ministry of Finance, but Dr. Drexel Glasgow, who's there in the back, and I want him to raise his hand so you can see. And we sat with, this, with CDB, and we were told uh, that we have to move forward. And together with him, and then, of course, he went and sought the input of other ministries and departments, we came together with a priority list and a planned way forward of how we were going to be able to move forward this loan and get the recovery moving. We were also able to negotiate some new terms. And with that in mind, we were also able to do the revised recovery plan with the RDA, which uh, we need to give the RDA a round of applause. Because with the RDA being um, one of the entities under the Premier's office, we were able to work with them to say that out of the $65 million thus far, we were able to give $40 million thus far to say these are the priorities of government, including this building that we are here at today, including the building at Brigado Flax, including the building, uh, administration building in the valley, in, including help with um, the basketball court, the Jeffrey Keynes basketball court. So you can see clearly that Virgin Gorda has received quite a bit of TLC, tender love and care. And we have seen where the RDA has done all of this through a transparent and accountable manner, and where we have also been able to have our local contractors, which is one of the areas that we were able to renegotiate, to have a higher ceiling to allow our contractors, local contractors, to be one of the main persons to be able to tender for these projects. Please. I'm not sure who came with the idea to rename this building after him. Because at one time we thought the building would never finish. This building was started many, many years ago. And every time government changed, for sure this building stopped. Every time government changed, this building stopped. They made the last go, I think, after the 2007 uh, election. They decided, let's give it one more go. And that was when they had a consortium with Sammy, Shiverton and Ray, who got together and finally got this building built. I must commend the Deputy Governor for making sure that we expand the services to the sister islands. The Premier has a motto, no district left behind. I'm going to add to that, no path of any district left behind. That was our Honorable Premier, uh, Honorable Andrew A. Foy, as well as the District for the Ninth uh, Representative, Honorable Vincent Weekly, really speaking to the opportunity yes. today. But, Ron, uh, the building was compassionately dedicated in honor of the late uh, Mr. John 
E. George. And of course, what a fitting tribute, of course, being uh, sent over by the students of the Robinson O'Neill Primary School. This poem was actually written by Miss Regina Richardson out of the Deputy Governor's Office over there in Virgin Garda. If you missed this, such a beautiful poem. Yes. Listening. John E. George Sr., his legacy. John E. George Sr., an illustrious son of the British Virgin Isles, whose parents proudly welcomed their fourth child, adopted by an uncle who nurtured and guided the path he would go, an avid scholar of the Valley Alicorn, his future seemed to glow. At 25, he wedded the lovely Mrs. Flo, supreme joy of his life, together raised a family of nine, devoted husband and wife. At Methodist and Holiness churches, he preached the sacred word, and his jubilant voice raised in song would distinctively be heard. An agent of government for decades was postmaster and similarly performed the role of our community's registrar. His home officially became the site of the mail room. For countless years, the public freely used his telephone. As faithful servant of this beloved country, he served with immense pride and humble dignity, a robust man of humor. His merry laughter echoed loud the sweetest jokes he ever told could captivate a crowd. He embraced life with passion and truly lived it well. For merits of his legacy, our grateful hearts do swell. In reflection of this stalwart, we pause to graciously salute with profound appreciation and the sentiments of this tribute. Beautifully done by the students of the Robinson O'Neill Primary School in Virgin Garda Run. Really capturing, and um, I think not only the contributions, but the character of Mr. somebody George, who, yeah. yes, absolutely, who con contributed to the community, but also whose legacy will continue to live on forever. And I think that it will do in this very uh, beautiful edifice that will continue to serve at the persons of Virgin Gorda viewers. Uh, still ahead, the USVI is uh, troubled by vaccine tourism amid a vaccination rollout and a Bogus Bay man has been arrested uh, on uh, illegal firearm charges. We have all of those details after a word from our sponsors. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, police of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force on a routine stop and search operation on Sunday, February 7th, 2020, uncovered a loaded Glock pistol and charged one man in uh, relation to the uh, seizure. Officers of the armed response team on patrol in the Fat Hogs Bay area uh, stopped the driver of a vehicle with excessive tint on its uh, windows. After notifying the driver of the law as it relates to the illegal tint, a search warrant was a search, sorry, was executed, and the firearm was found in the driver's front pants pocket with 12 rounds of ammunition. A charge uh, with carrying an unlicensed firearm and illegal tint is Dabari Jonique Mercer, 26, of Bogus Bay. This firearm seizure and arrest comes after police recorded a second robbery of an establishment in a little over a week. Two masked men, one carrying a firearm, entered the island sizzle in Bogus Bay on Saturday around 8 p.m. and approached two employees. One of the perpetrators grabbed the cash register at the bar, a chain from the patron's neck uh, seated at the bar and a purse from an employee and fled the scene at the rear of the establishment. Now, no injuries, thankfully, were reported. Similarly, a week prior to that, two armed men entered the D. La Santa Bakery and restaurant in Seacouse Bay around 8.45 p.m. One of the uh, men jumped over the counter and took a quantity of cash from the register. Now, the men that made their way to Charles Chill Bar and pointed a firearm at two patrons. The 
assailants both fled the scene with cash and jewelry taken from the two patrons, a cash pan from the bar and the cashier's handbag. No one was injured in this incident. Now, Commissioner of Police Michael Matthews said the continued use of illegal firearms in the territory will be met with a robust response from the force. Whilst at this time, no links can be made between the firearm recovered yesterday and the recent robberies, potential suspects will include anyone found carrying illegal firearms. Your sons, nephews, your neighbors might tell you that they keep a gun for protection. Don't be fooled. What starts wrong will end wrong and often uh, end in a tragedy. And as we have seen in a very recent times, possessing a firearm without a license is against the law. Now, these were the words of our police commissioner. And of course, um, Jovan, they continue, the Royal Vergence continues to do their best in uh, really tracking down on illegal firearms um, across the territory. And we're trusting them to do that because Indeed. we have been seeing, like, like the commissioner said, what has been unveiling in the Virgin Islands recently. And we want to be able to curb that. But that responsibility lies not Most just definitely. with the police force, but with all of us. As we look across in the USVI, we see the territory's vaccination rollout is continuing amid concerns over vaccine tourism as Governor Albert Bryan confirmed Monday that travels have been travelers sorry have been coming to the Virgin Islands to receive a dose of the coveted COVID-19 vaccine. Now during the weekly government house coronavirus press briefing, Governor Bryan said and I quote, a major concern across the nation is vaccine tourism. I have heard of people flying in to get the vaccine. He said that he wants to discourage trips to the territory solely for the purpose of immunization and confirmed reports of such activity by recent travelers, though the said number of vaccine tourists is, quote, a very, very small percentage. Now, viewers, it is unclear how the government would be able to determine the number of vaccine tourists who received one of the 12,094 doses administered in the territory to date including 2,967 completed second doses, which are required for both the Pfizer as well as the Moderna vaccines, as the healthcare providers are not tracking the recipient's residency. Brian said that anyone who qualifies for the vaccination under the current rollout guidelines is eligible to receive the shots regardless of their legal residency or their immigration status. From a public health standpoint, Brian said a person's inability to provide proof of residency or citizenship should not be a barrier to vaccination. And free access to the vaccine serves to protect the global community from the rapid spread of COVID-19 and its new arrivals. The territory's health care providers are currently administering about 2,300 doses a week. And Brian said that the goal is to get that number up to 3,000 and have just about 50,000 Virgin Islanders vaccinated by July 1st. Now, the goal of mass vac vaccination, of course, Brian added, is to really ensure the largest number of people possible are inoculated against the deadly virus so the community at large can achieve herd, com herd immunity, uh, which helps to protect the most vulnerable, including infants and individuals with medical conditions that prevent uh, from safely receiving vaccinations. Ron, I think there is nothing uh, that ceases to amaze us when it comes Not to this yes. pandemic. Uh, we are now coming across the term vaccine mm -hmm. tourism. Uh, which is relatively new, but as a result of uh, the competition we've been seeing, also rich countries have been hoarding vaccines. Yes. So now persons like the USVI, uh, once they recognize that they can have access to the vaccine, they're now yeah. traveling just because just get uh, they need the vaccine. But we have to be very careful because according to Br uh, Governor Bryan, he's saying that there's no way to prevent it. So mm -hmm. really it's a more of a moral decision not Correct. to for persons not to go, but we have to find more effective ways of managing because uh, at the end of the day, the first priority should be the residents of that jurisdiction. But then how do we prevent this yeah, from happening? There definitely should be a better way of, of tracking and, and really realizing, because just like you said, and Governor Bryan has uh, insinuated, uh, the residents of the U.S. Virgin Islands and other territories as well uh, could be at risk for not receiving a vaccine just because uh, they uh, missed an opportunity for someone else, an outsider. So we don't, definitely don't want to see that happening. Our viewers, that is all the time we have for today. But you can check us out on 284media.com or on Facebook yes. or at Twitter, 284 Media and 284BVI, respectively. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. It's always a pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Bye-bye.